August hits, and of course that means we've got new usage stats to go over today. Now, it's not a normal tier shift, but as you can see, we still have potential tier shifts. So just like with the last three month period, I'm still going to talk about what could be going on with Inu and uh, <laughs> look at PU. So we got obliterated by Arnie last shift. It's looking like PU's turn might be coming up with us taking quite a few of their metagame staples. So that's going to be interesting, of course, before we get too far into this. Good old reminder for y'all to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Very close to 9,000 subscribers. I mean, we're over halfway there. And I want to hit 10k by the end of the year. As per usual, again, a reminder. Hey, there's... I got a very fun video coming. Fun in my opinion. So, hey, subscribe. <laughs> You'll know what it is then. Now, of course, we can start off with what may be leaving in you to go up. I will also just highlight the fact that... <laughs> Look at these things that you, you could be getting hit with. That's kind of absurd. But, um, rises from... And you up to Aryu. Now, some of these I really don't understand. But others I'm kind of like, okay. So Galvantula going up that. I don't know how good webs really are in Aryu. But with how it's kind of known as... I'm not going to say the hyper offense tier. Because Inu exists too. <laughs> but a very favorable hyper offense tier. Sticky web probably isn't that bad. Galvantula rising doesn't really change things in Inu at all. Because we still have Araquanid. We still have Smeargle. If people want to use webs they're still going to be able to use webs, right? And I think Araquanid is close enough to a side grade to where, I mean, it just fills in fine for Galvantula. You know, you trade the speed and, of course, difficulty of taunting for perhaps a little bit stronger of a Mon, or maybe a Mon that's a little bit more annoying to switch around just because Water Bubble Liquidation is really strong. It's a little bulkier. It's got some cool text with, like, Mirror Coat, too, that you can try. So, I believe... That Galvantula Rising is kind of a net, you know, it's just a net neutral. Quagsire Rising as well, I view it as a net neutral to the tier. I don't really think Quag is, like, that big of a deal for Inu. Okay, good, I had that looped. Um, You don't really see Quagsire used at all. Hurt has completely solidified itself as, like, the offense slash bulky offense type of water ground. Gastro kind of sees a little bit of use, too, just because it's got the water immunity. It's kind of funny right now. I remember in the past, I talked about how Pert it felt like, or not Pert, Gastro felt like it didn't have a place on teams. And it kind of still feels the same, but now Quag's kind of also dealing with that. Because Stall isn't very common in Inu. It gets at least some use, so you got to put a little respect on it. But it doesn't see a ton of use anymore for us, because Stall's just been very absent, I think, ever since we lost... Something or other in the last tier shift? I'm already forgetting. But we never really saw Stall heavily used anyway, and the one time I remember seeing it in NUPL, it was a game versus Diamond's Realm, and Diamond's Realm, I think, 6 would So, all that to say, not really a huge thing. It just kind of further puts extra pressure on Stall to try to adapt if it loses Quag. Umbreon Rising is a more interesting one. Now, it's kind of funny too, because Umbreon, and it's not even like what the best dark type like if we go up here and we look at our current viability ranking thread which is under an update right now by the way just so y'all know there is an update coming out but if you look at the vr of course incineroar is by far the best one like it's not even close and then you got a lowland muck is the second best and then you do have umbreon right now here but right under it too i mean there's brute bonnet which some people do like there's Wo Qian, which some people would say maybe could go up. So Umbreon doesn't really have like some uncontested spot here. And Umbreon also will always struggle with insane passivity, where its damage is entirely linked to being able to toxic things pretty much. Or, you know, that you're something foul play nukes. Maybe you're like a Lucario and Umbreon can get some clutch Terra turn, correct versus you or something, right? So I do like having it around, of course. It is a nice option for team building. If you want to build a Wish Pass team and you need a Dark type, Umbreon can, of course, fill that void. But I mean, you look at Wish Pass users. We got Vapo still. We got Sylveon still. You got Screamtail if that's more up to your speed. I think really it's just, again, yeah, we lose an option for a Dark type. Now, that may not matter. Let's look at this. Overquill apparently could drop, which is interesting because it's been such a mainstay of Aryu for so long due to Rain being really good. Now, if you look at Aryu's VR, they actually did update it recently, and Kingdra dropped. 
which maybe signifies rain is getting worse there. I don't really know, but it's interesting to see Overquill potentially could fall back down to Inu. Of course, y'all remember how much of a mainstay it was in our metagame, whether it was for offensive sets, whether it's for more utility-based sets, especially in that one Galarian Slowbro metagame we had, where especially defensive Overquill was just quite solid, quite consistent as a check. And getting that back would be pretty cool too, because it's a spiker. Look at our VR right now, once again. Let's find the first spiker that appears on our VR. Hmm. Blister, you do not count, I don't care. Hmm, still looking. Hmm. Oh, Klefki and Deancey. And we, we kind of could take Deancey out of that. You really don't see it for spikes in this metagame. It's basically Klefki, and in kind of Bramble Gas, but that's really only for really, really offensive teams. Overcoat would be quite a lot for us. It would give us a lot of options, or not a lot, but it'd give us another option for a spike or give us another dark deck. It's just good roll compression. And I could even see it having some spot on offense. I remember Shinjineer using an Incineroar team with for hyper offense. We could definitely see Overquill kind of fill that similar void too. So I'm excited for that type of change. Some NUBL edits we see here as well. Mew apparently could go all the way up to UU. They've been appreciating Mew as a hyper offense lead a lot more because you've got both rocks and spikes. You can have taunt still. You got Misty Explosion to maintain momentum. So makes sense. I don't think Mew was ever going to be considered for an unban, at least not anytime in the near future. So this is pretty much whatever to us. And then Necrozma, though, dropping back down to NUBL would be interesting because that would allow us to unban it. Now, I don't think Necrozma is going to be something really getting considered either. Um, set versatility, difficulty to revenge kill because of its bulk with prism armor added as well. So I just anticipate that staying in UBL, but it'll at least be an option. Now, we can go down to things that we're going to be taking from PU, and this is quite extensive too. I mean, that's like eight Pokemon? Just, well, okay. Seven because Inteleon's PUBL. They just banned it. With the suspect test. Inteleon's quite strong here. Eternally thinks it's like potentially ban worthy, which I find interesting. But Inteleon's quite nice because the speed tier is huge and it's pretty difficult to switch around. Especially when you look at how non spec sets are actually seeing some use this gen. It got Taunt as a buff, which is kind of interesting because now if Vaporeon switches into you, I mean, you could actually Taunt it before you turning out. You know? <laughs> Like, maybe you Hydro Pump it, it switches in, you taunt as it tries to, um, wish or something. Maybe it's trying to wish past you to, like, a Steel-type if you want to deny that. And then you can U-turn for momentum. Mentalion in general is just really nice. Our tier doesn't really have great speed, if you'll notice. Like, you've got Talonflame, Inteleon is, like, a very Sword and Shield-esque interaction where Talonflame can speed creep in Intel and you feel pretty okay about that. And in as terms of other Scarfers, I mean, it's what? Flygon and Mianxiao? And then really not a lot else is commonly seen with a Scarf. Like, you've got other Scarfers that can exist, right? Basket Legion is still fine. Scarf Breloom is not really a set, but, like, it's acceptable enough, right? Monkey Dory. But once you get past that, I mean, it's not really, like, these mods are common? Or that they commonly run Scarf? I feel like that's maybe the big thing. If they're not common mons, maybe they still can run a Scarf. Or maybe they're common mons that can run Scarf, but they just don't want to. So, all that to say, Inteleon can often have a pretty uncontested speed tier. Outside of, like, maybe priority. Like, you could have, um, First Impression as well from Flygon. You could have, uh, Extreme Speed Lucario, Mach Punch from Breloom, and just other varying methods of priority. But, they're not that common as well. Pretty good mon. Good breaker. Love it. Did you see us <laughs> yoinking both of these from your steel types? Um, shout out to Luna. Luna's banned now for this great post here. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoy Matang. Hey, don't hate. Matang, the uh, Gen 3 NU GOAT, I guess. But Bronzong, do I really need to talk about the Zonger? I have, I have preached the good word of this mod the entire mod. <laughs> I've been saying to y'all, this mod's elite! This shit slaps! Yum! Give me more! I'm hungry still! <laughs> it's just such a good mod. I love the setup. I love, like, the pure demon setup set. I even just like the Rocks Iron Press set. I like Rocks 3 attacks. 
Of course, a huge thing is that you're a pretty damn good Flygon check in a metagame that's kind of starved for them, unless you want to go for, um, Earthworm. Shoutouts to Stories for that. You're still a good check to the offensive fairy types when you run into them. Of course, you're a good Crest check. You're still kind of dependent on set, but again, you can run pretty reasonably good sets that will check Crest. Big thing, too, is you check Cloyster kind of decently. It can get a little dicey if they're Terra Ghost, because then you don't have Body Press to smack them with, but... I find that as long as you have Iron Defense, you're pretty safe just to match Cloyster setup. And you just need, like, Nightshade, and it's a 3-hit KO, so it's not really a huge deal. You are a great Vile Plume check as well. You check those annoying Deancies, you check Chinchino. It's, in Chin Ch it's Chinchilla, so surely it's Chinchino, right? And yeah, check Monkey Dory, just be wary of Trick, check PZ, same thing. Just a lot of good defensively. Roger rising back up, I really don't know why. But I guess it is probably our third best steel type. In terms of defensive, and Lucario's up here, but it's probably our third best defensive steel. Klefki, I'd, I'd say Klefki and Bronzong are the top two. I think you could argue either order. Personally, I think maybe Bronzong's number one. Bronzong one, Klefki two. And then, yeah, I'd probably say Copper 3 and then Reggie Steel 4, which I don't know, man. Reggie Steel you would think would be better, but I, I honestly do believe losing Seismic Toss and Toxic would quite much. So maybe that's part of it, and you see Reggie Steel eventually drop, but I mean, yeah, I think Raj is a fine Mon to have Rise back up. I, I still want to try Assault Vest Copper too. I remember using it with Joey for PU. It was really good. <laughs> so maybe we'll try more here. Kilowatcha Rising though. Another Mon that I have spoken the good word of. So, yeah, y'all y'all know what I'm going on about here. Halo's really cool, though. Good exploiter of high Talon Flame usage. You punish any of the Talon Flame that aren't going max or near max speed because you're one base point slower. So, like, they, they have to run almost full investment to outspeed you. So, that's cool. You also are really good at deterring defog usage if you run competitive. Or, if you don't want to fit a ground type on your team, but you still want a bolt switch blocker, which, frankly, in this metagame isn't even needed, but maybe you're just like me, and you feel like it's beneficial to have, just in case, you can do Volt Absorb still. Very good breaker, though, as well. Of course, losing a multiple ground types, losing Magnazone, all of those were really good checks. And a lot of the same from Inteleon applies to Halo, where it's just a super fast pivot that's impossible, really, to stop pivoting all around your team. Like, what's our defensive counterplay to Kilo, right? A lot of it's just hope your Mon is pretty specially bulky, and that it's good enough to take multiple hits. There's not things that, like, exclusively wall it, like there were when we had Rhyperior and Magma. So, pretty easy to see why this Mon's gotten a lot better. Creep Tower Rising Up as well, which I think is for a blend of Hyper Offense and just Wish Pass. So... Especially when Deoxys Defense wasn't banned yet. You did see a lot of Wish Encore Screen Tail, just to make sure that DoD couldn't set up as easily, and it of course still applies to Cresselia. Naturally, DoD wasn't super phased by Encore, because it's like, okay, well, I've got pressure, so congrats, you used two of them there. Good job. But, I think that was part of the reason, and now it could even latch on for a bit longer of term. Same with, like, shutting down Bronzong, too. There's just a lot of good bulky setup in Anya. And having Scream Tail around, of course, applies. You kind of check Flygon, too. It's how bulky you are. So that's useful. And for Hyper Offense, we've actually seen Calm Mind 3 attacks with Speed Booster get at least a noticeable amount of usage. It can honestly be kind of annoying to deal with just because Scream Tail's so fast, so revenge killing and bulky. So revenge killing, it's not ever easy. The one caveat is this one has base 65. <laughs> So even though it's got really good coverage, it's still not particularly strong. It's got to boost at least a couple times, I would say, before it really is putting the hurt on you, so. Still pretty manageable. I think, too, being a good fighting check, though, helps it, so. Globro, this shocks no one. Regular Slowbro left, so Globro starts seeing more usage. It actually checks Toxic Rogue pretty decently as well, unlike other fighting types. Or fighting type checks, I mean, that you got, because you wall full stab. So that's important. I did see in our VR vote, there are actually people wanting to vote it down from A, though, which may just be, again, our A rank is so clustered right now anyway. And you see, like, right there. Here's still a decent amount of mons, but generally you wouldn't see, like, A have this many. So I think 
kind of it just is a matter of reorganizing and once we have the viability rankings actually like in a nice little table format it'll be easier to see okay well what's actually going on with the vr how do things look do we need to adjust anything um but i like global a lot in this meta of course very sturdy fight check you check you check basically all of the super common fighting types even like lucario and glade you're at least an okay enough check to and then i'm gonna put wall in quotes because technically breloom can run bulldoze but walling me and shao breloom and abdoxacroak is quite big sucks that you don't check things like flygon and Incineroar, but that kind of just is how life goes on the flip side it's cool that you aren't as pressured by lowland buck as some of these other checks are like knockoff still hurts but it's not like it comes out and you're just ruined so that's cool Star this one's funny star raptor from pu to inu and i'm almost certain this is because it just got ranked on the vr again right it is ranked down here somewhere um yeah i think it's because we ranked it again and people are like oh shit star raptor's viable in inu Go i gotta use this mon man it's admittedly not the worst the problem for raptor though is it's a tier one where hazard removal isn't very good. Two, it has terrible overlap with our best removal, Talon Flame. And three, the best steel types you can't even close combat reliably. Of course, Bronzong and Klefki are our two best steel types, and they just aren't weak to CC. So that sucks. And then you look at any other like flying check in the tier. I mean, Diancie even is up here. You can't CC that. So I think Raptor has a lot of things going against it. I. I don't know. I think this was always an overranking of it. I'm okay if it wants to hang around C, but yeah. <laughs> Pretty much just bad. Also, um, one thing I did want to mention um, up here too. I guess there's actually something worth noting. Venusaur and Ninetales both did drop to PU. Ninetales obviously no drought, but Venusaur couldn't even hang on even with Bang Sun, so there you go. And then of course Toxicro from ZU all the way up to NU. This has been in the making for months now, so... Croak stands. Rise. <laughs> Your god is back, Toxic Croak. Looking better than ever. It is just a great time, man. It's pretty much... If you notice how the tier feels right now, it definitely has a bit of a Gen 8 vibe to it, but I feel like it's just better. <laughs> like, maybe one difference is the hazard removal's worse, but I feel like the tier is starting to play a lot like Gen 8, which... Some people will hate, some people will enjoy. I'm pretty neutral on it because I think it's like better Gen 8, which is helpful because I'm not a huge fan of Gen 8. Anyhow, Brubonnet actually dropping is also interesting. This is kind of related to Sun. Of course, Bonnet was not necessarily a staple on drought teams, but it was certainly very, very common. And Brubonnet is just tough because you compare it to the other dark types, I feel like it's a lot shakier of a check. To some of these annoying setup mons that we've had that you wanted your dark type to check it's kind of similar to umbreon in that regard where it wasn't like dead weight and you definitely could still beat some of these mons but like especially when deoxys defense was here you just couldn't break it at all and you're still weak to moonblast from like crest but you have recovery like something like wuchin does to at least make it kind of okay and then you look at something like Bronzong, where it literally just has Iron Defense Body Press to ruin you. And in hell, I think mean, Wochin just getting more usage now also hurts Bonnet, because that's direct competition, typing-wise. I don't really think that their teams differ so extensively to where it's like, oh, well, at least Brute Bonnet doesn't fit on the same... No, they kind of just do. Bonnet and Wochin fit on various structures, so that doesn't help. Bonnet stands, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and of course, you can look at our usage stats, um... Hey guys, I think Flygon might be the best mon in the tier. It, like, this is actually insane. Let's so go to, um, Talon here as well. It's not even, like, it's, like, not far ahead of Alolan Muck. So, I find that really interesting. Incineroar, top five because of checking DoD pre-ban and, of course, still checking Cress. Also just fitting on teams really, really effectively right now. Diancie still maintaining this absurd usage as well, I find very funny. I think part of this is just a testament to how good Hyper Offense has remained, even with some bans in place. Diancy just still ends up one fitting on these teams, but two giving you insurance against them with its offensive Trick Room set. 
Cloister usage, of course, too, in or on ladder, differing a ton from that in UPL metagame, where you see now Cloisters getting used all the time and people actually wanting it banned. I find it quite funny. Um, you got Hurt establishing itself as like the new defensive ground, where it doesn't really have real competition. Delayed Lucario both showing their ugly faces up here. Cress, I will say, keep the Cress usage in mind next month. Now, people on the VR Council are not convinced Cresselia is like god now. Actually, a lot of us are voting it to drop from A rank down to A minus. But note that even with DOD in the tier, Cress was still seeing immense usage. So Cresselia probably will spike into top five usage next month. Just warning you now. <laughs> Obviously, C2 Gator pre ban was also catching on really, really hard. And Vapo is maintained that it's really good. Nian Xiao continues to fall off a bit, and admittedly, it may not even be an A plus mon in the tier anymore. See, right now it is up here. I actually think you could argue it's not that caliber of a Pokemon. Um, it's kind of just tough not to still respect it a lot, because it's so strong, so safe of a pivot. You know. And even Vile Plume usage is a little bit low. People, um, if you notice, with Plumus, it's only at number 20. Still high, but people aren't as sold on Plume anymore, so that's something to keep in mind going forward, especially because things like Shandy, Monkey Dory, Hisui Tife, Insin kind of counts, I guess, but not really. There's a lot of its checks, we're starting to see more use, which hurts it. Globro, even Bronze on, you know, things like that. We could even go down to like that 4.5 area. So you see here is Raja's actually the cutoff. Raja is um barely projected to rise right now, but also if you notice, Quagsire would actually be dropping which I find quite interesting. And two, we can look at some PU cutoff mons that may continue to look potentially in you in the future. Tornadus, one of them. I think it's in ZUBL right now. Um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Tornadus is ZUBL. That could end up rising eventually. It's still pretty high up on in use viability ranking thread. Frankly, for rain. Um, you see some terrain goblins as well, like Hitmonlee and Oricorio Pom Pom. Pouty and Tauros. Aqua potentially gonna rise. People are a lot more fond of it now with Gator gone and of course Slowbro Lung gone at this point. It's a good offensive Incineroar check. Pretty good Scarfer as well, if you remember the previous meta. Pretty good bulk up Mon. So people are once again fond of this. Heracross continuously gaining more usage as well, as people really like how it's able to threaten things like Crest, both pre and post Terra, decently reliably. You got at least, you know, you got Facade CC Megahorn. You cover all aspects right there, so that's pretty good for you. You can also see Bonnets, like, vanished from the mech. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting, too, to see. But yeah, I think that's really all I've got to say now. I hope y'all enjoy. But down below, what are you, um... What what usage is maybe most shocking to you so far? And this could even be talking about anything up here. I mean, like, if I want to talk about this real quick, like, Ogre Pond dropping out of UU is interesting. I can't say that I'm necessarily surprised. Zapdos is super good again, and Ogre Pond sees the Zapdos matchup and cries. Okie Dogi is also not something you want to see if you're an Ogre Pond. It just kind of sucks for you. So, also I find this one really funny. Where are you, suspect tested Okie Dogi, only for it to now be saying like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna rise anyway," <laughs> and it got banned. <laughs> it didn't get banned. It was like 13 to 14 in favor of keeping it. <laughs> but hope y'all enjoyed, man. I'll catch y'all next time. Appreciate y'all watching the videos as well while I was gone. Those, or again, the last, like, since it was like June, not June, July 17th, everything from then to yesterday. That was pre-recorded, man, so appreciate y'all. I'll catch you next time. Peace.